What's up guys? Welcome back to the Orion Training Group YouTube channel. I'm Jared and this is our medical instructor, Josh Nickens. Mm -hmm. um, Josh, tell me a little bit about your background, what you do, and uh, just your kind of daily job with medical stuff. Yep. So my name is Josh. I work full-time as a paramedic. I mostly do contract work. I have a background in 911 and critical care. And I spent some time in the military. Not really anything cool to talk about there. There we go. So he's got a lot of first-hand experience with how to use all of the things that you're going to be seeing in this video today, which is IFAX. Right. Uh, what does IFAX mean for all the people on YouTube? We're going to go with individual first aid kit. Something like that, right? Um, when we say individual first aid kit, who is using what's in the IFAX? This would be traditionally, right? So traditionally an IFAX would have been for your buddy to use on you. Mm -hmm. And then of course, like for you to use if there's nothing else. Like this is the only medical gear you have and you have to do something. We're going to use that, of course. And, and I can say from my experience as a cop mm -hmm. that that happens a lot. So yep. I have an IFAC on me for patrol or for SWAT, and I end up using my stuff on some innocent person mm -hmm. or a few times on, on a shooter or whatever else, on, you know, bad guy, you still render aid. Mm -hmm. So we say individual first aid kit doesn't always mean it's just going to be for use on you. Right. right. So that's something to consider. If you have an IFAC at the mall mm -hmm. in your purse or you keep a fanny pack or whatever, you might be using that on your kid or your wife or a, a passerby or whatever else. So that brings us into talking about what should be in it, which can be a tricky thing because yep. context is everything, right? Yep. Yep. So um, let's start with the context of your not wearing armor and all those kinds of things. Uh, you're out and about, mm -hmm. what should you have in your IFAC, item-wise? I would say we're going to have a tourniquet on us, right? Mm -hmm. If anything, I want to make sure that I have a tourniquet, keep some chest seals, some kind of gauze. And yeah. where are you going to store that becomes the question. So. Yeah, it's it, it's hard, right? Because there's ankle kits. It's and a there's lot. The, like, it, I'm it, not a fan of the ankle kit. Like the ankle it, kit at all. You know, if you're wearing anything fitted, yeah. it's not going to fit around your ankle uh, unless you're going to wear like Jinko jeans, which are out of style now. <laughs> yeah. So what I end up, my solution often is a fanny pack. Okay. Um, and I don't know what exactly <clears throat> you're carrying a lot of what, you know, you're dealing with in <laughs> on your, on your off time, you're fashionable. He's an attractive <laughs> young man. Uh, he's not going to have a fanny pack. No. I'm already married. I could give a shit. So That's I wear a fanny pack around him with my white new balances. Um, tall I do socks. and tall socks, tall socks. and you know, boy shorts. Right. Um, <clears throat> I carry ibuprofen, not because it's something that goes in an IFAC, but because you need this, yes. okay? Part of a boo-boo yes. kit. We'll do another video on boo-boo kits later. <laughs> Ignore the ibuprofen, but I do end up using that way more than anything else that's in here, right. okay? Um, let's talk about the first thing in the IFAC, gloves. You got some gloves. Can you tell us <laughs> how important this is in your experience as a paramedic? Yeah, I, um, <laughs> people are discussing it. I don't want to touch them <laughs> without gloves, especially like, so. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that happens in bodily, bodily fluids and some nasty shit that lives in bodily fluids, right? Yeah. And I just, if you had to go get the test done to see if you caught yeah. AIDS and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you get those yeah. TB tests, everything regularly. Yeah. So, no, wear yeah. gloves no matter what you're doing. And it, there's three or four times that I have been covered in someone else's goo. Mm -mm. Um, that's going to be a meme. <laughs> that... Uh, <laughs> 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 that I wished I had had some sort of physical barrier. Right. Right. Um, sucking chest wounds, uh, stopping an arterial bleed with my finger, because at the time our department said, you don't need a tourniquet, it's a liability. That happens still, which is mm -hmm. why we're doing these mm -hmm. videos. So if you have the time to render aid, you probably have the time to put on gloves. Right. right? Yeah, it takes two seconds. It takes two that. seconds. So that's stage one. We're not talking about like the order of what to use, but gloves should come first, right? We'll do another video on March. Right. Um, so tell them about combat gauze and about these types of, of gauzes and what they do, how they're made. Yeah. So what Jared oh. has, I'm gonna throw one on the floor because I didn't like it. <laughs> but not my combat my, gauze. What Jared has is some of this um, LE version of the Quick Lock combat gauze. Uh, yeah. The only change I think is that they put like a cool medical law right. enforcement badge on it. Yeah, yeah. It's literally the same thing, just in a different package. The good thing about it is that it has a hemostatic agent with it. So what does that do? It's gonna aid in coagulation. So by packing that down in there, it has an ingredient that gets activated. It's gonna help you stop bleeding faster. So when you're done wound packing, you don't have to hold pressure on that wound for as long if you're using a hemostatic gauze. You know, if you're not, it would be 10 minutes. If you are, anywhere from two to four minutes, depending on the type of gauze. Uh, but we can talk about wound packing at another time as well. Yeah, we're gonna go in depth on wound yeah. packing in another video, but this is important to have <clears throat> because it stops bleeding 
in one way, right? Mm -hmm. Now, another thing that stops bleeding uh, would be our tourniquets. And there's a bunch of types of these. This is the cat. Uh, we think it's Gen 7. Yep. But uh, talk them through what, what tourniquets do and why. Yeah, so tourniquet is a restricting band, right? It's wide enough. You put it on, it Velcros down. What we're trying to do with that is compress all of the muscle inside your brachial or thigh or whatever area you happen to put it on enough to put pressure on that artery and blot the flow of blood. That's how we stop bleeding. So tourniquets stop bleeding by blocking arterial flow. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that's another thing we can get into after a while. This is Certainly. probably a, one of the most essential pieces of kit to have. If you're gonna have one thing, that's probably the best thing data supports you have at least one of. Yeah, and obviously like even pat down, that's not that that's not that bad to carry right you know right you can put that pretty much anywhere you can use that on kids right dogs yeah um, uh, i think it's down to compress the two inch circumference two inch like circumference that. yeah so maybe like a one and a half two year old you may not be able to use it on yeah uh, if you think about like uh the end of a barbell mm -hmm. right that's about the size it goes down to right and i think a lot of the audience is probably familiar with that yeah yeah and if not you should go touch yeah, grass you should, you should be yeah. touch iron repent um so this is a good thing to have on you compressible small concealable all right, so now we're gonna talk about something other than just bleeding, okay? So walk them through what a chest seal is, types, you know, how they work. Yeah, so these are the hyphen chest seals. These are vented, meaning they let air escape. Uh, what we're gonna be using these for is to occlude a sucking chest wound. So if air is escaping or trying to get back in, we're gonna cover that so it can't, right? It prevents a tension pneumo or pneumothorax from forming uh, where air gets trapped inside the body and we can't get it out. And that's essentially keeping you from breathing properly, right? Right, it starts compressing the lung and then everything starts moving around and it just causes a bad time. You right. can't, can't this breathe is, well. This is a big area of your body, right? Yeah. You probably should have something to stop a wound in that area that's, that's, that's harming your ability to Absolutely. freaking breathe. They don't, from experience, they don't do a great job stopping bleeding, but they stop air really, Correct. really well. Um, it does come in a two pack because normally if you have one, you're probably gonna have an exit wound on the back. Uh, there are non-vented versions. If you're going to use a non-vented version, they have to be burped occasionally. Mm -hmm. uh, and the good thing about these two is that the packaging is also exclusive. So worst case scenario, if you need more, just use the packaging and tape that down. On. And I have tried to use a magazine cover one time because I had seen that in a video. Okay. Again, this was when we didn't have the training and the equipment, really. And uh, I had these in my SWAT kit. I was responding on patrol, didn't have them with me, wasn't going to run the 500 yards back to my unit and get the chest seals. Right. So I'm like, God, oh, give me something, you know, magazine cover. And I put it and it didn't freaking work. Mm -hmm. um, not because of it not being capable, but I didn't have the training and understanding of really like the science of that. Right. Yep. That's, so, a big, that's a big thing. Uh, we talked about it with a lot of our, our subjects, but the why behind something is, is huge. Yeah, right? absolutely. So understanding the, the, the ways around some of those things and being creative is important. Uh, and the last thing I keep in here is just what I could fit. Right. Mm -hmm. This is a small, uh, set and there, there are a couple other small things we'll talk about but let's talk about other types of gauze other than the hemostatic absolutely this is probably and I know you've heard other instructors talk about it this is probably one of my favorite things to carry is individual roll gauze yep. uh, it, it works for the same thing you can use it for wound packing <clears throat> it also works really well to just like wipe away blood to dress small wounds if you need to wrap something, it's just, it's, it's really versatile and you can probably end up using this more than a lot of the other stuff yep. in everyday occurrences. Absolutely, yeah, small things, like we talk about boo-boo kits, right? It's not always like, I got shot at the mall. It might be I cut my finger doing something right. and I'm not needing anything other than this. Uh, shears. Shears. And these are like the Walmart version of shears. Yeah, these are really, this is like cheap, basic. Fisher price, my first EMS set, right? Yeah, we're sending like a like, hundred million of these to Ukraine so okay. they can fall in the ocean or whatever. Yeah. Um, but what would you suggest people get for shears that are better than this and how do they work? Fair. Um, so to start off with, shears are super simple, right? Mm -hmm. We use these to access wounds, remove clothing, do whatever we have to do. If you need to cut something, shears work great. Uh, as far as what to get, there are several varieties out there. A lot of people like the uh, Raptor shears uh -huh. that fold up and stuff. Heard a lot about those. They're great. I've used them for a long time. I carry a Etch shear now, which is basically the same thick shear design. Just it doesn't it doesn't fold up, and they're twenty five to thirty dollars versus the eighty dollar mark. Mm. Um, I'm frugal. These are like. One ninety nine. You buy these by the bag. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you said you carry Ed Sheeran at first. Oh no! Like someone's missing out on an opportunity for I fun wish, there. Yeah. So, this is 
stuff you can carry anywhere, everywhere in a nondescript fanny pack. Now, I know somebody in the comments is going to be like, where'd you get that fanny pack? That's sick. Uh, Amazon, <laughs> it was $10.99 prime if you buy within the next eight hours to your house in, you know, five mm -hmm. minutes or whatever. So um, they have the Baton Rouge Distribution Center here, and it literally was at my house, like, within... 24 hours of me ordering it. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, don't need anything crazy. You don't need to go buy a $80 overstitched crazy, you know, someone's going to brand this as a tactical fanny pack and it's going to be the same thing. But also make sure that what you're buying is at least going to do what you need. If I'm walking around at the mall, this is cool. If I need this to be like load bearing or something else, or I'm doing something else with it, maybe not. Yeah. So, and I will also wear this with my kid. And that'll bring us into, okay, what if we're doing something law enforcement, military, some something a little bit more direct, or your function as a paramedic, mm -hmm. supporting a SWAT team, or you know, if we get into fantasy land and the apocalypse has happened, and I got to wear armor and things to, just to survive, what do we need to have on our kits in addition to whatever else? Um, so let's talk about your kit first. Sure. Walk them through what you're what you're dealing with and why. Yeah, and so as a disclaimer, this is all stuff that I'm still playing with to test it out, right? Um, so I have a, a GP pouch on the side. That's the Jesta from Spiritus, I think. Yep. 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 I have just probably some of the same stuff in here. Uh, we'll start with what we've gone over, which is the larger version of the hyphen chest seal. Just the two pad there. See also, the difference. Also vented. These pack a lot better if you're running something smaller. That's why I got the small ones. Yep. Uh, mine still has MPAs in it. I know they're going out of style, and we're leading along to it, but. To secure an airway, an MPA works great if you, if you have it. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say they don't use them. In EMS, I work in an area where there's a lot of overdoses and I use MPAs on pretty much every one because it improves the ability to ventilate somebody significantly. Along with that, I keep a normal combat quit clock gauze. Non-LE version. Non-LE version. Identical product, right? Yeah, exact same thing. This one's green, the other one was blue. <laughs> Blue makes it better. Right. But roll gauze, right? I have a Sharpie for marking everything. My own shears. They're attached to a lanyard because I have left shears on the scene multiple times. Yeah. So having uh, some redundancy there to where I can't leave them behind is fantastic. Those are the ones I carry in this kit. So same shears. Yeah, I think those are from North American Rescue. Yeah. Um, I keep a pressure dressing in there. This is a... Elias? Elias? I, I'll, I'll mess that name up. Elias? Elias? So I have actually not put hands on one of these. Um, I have used, you know, the H bandages, mm -hmm. the Israeli bandages and all that. So um, just real quickly, what's different about this one for anyone looking? So I like this one. This one has a, a hemostatic agent in it as ah, well. Oh, okay. So they have, a, they have a very large pad in there. There, there is packing dolls that you can pull out of the pad and pack if you need to. So it includes then, packing with hemostatic mm -hmm. and a pressure dressing. So and then cool. they, they have a little eye shield on top of them as well. It's kind of cheesy, but if you need it, like it's it, it's there. I like these because I can carry one thing that does multiple things. I like that. But, yeah, I've not run into that before. That's cool. Um, these are in here for me to play with. They're just pre pre cut tape. Okay, cool. Um, go ahead and bust open and tape things down. There is a survival blanket. And we're going to talk about the, another video. We're going to talk about the March assessment and the algorithm. Yep. And this would be part of dealing with hypothermia. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Which is, if you don't think about it, actually really important. So, okay, cool. We stopped the bleeding. We did all the other crap. And now the dude lost a bunch of blood. He's getting really cold and he dies anyway. Yep. So, all, that, all this cool stuff's great. But if you can't keep somebody warm, well, these cost, what, $1.99? Yeah, they're cheap. And we, we, they we don't weigh just, anything. We just assume that all trauma patients are going to be cold. Correct. Right? So, like, correct. If it's 90 degrees in, in Louisiana, I'm still cranking the heat up in the back. Doesn't of my mean his body temperature is not going to be Absolutely. that, right? So Absolutely. this is cheap, easy, and you'd hate to do all this cool stuff, and then your buddy dies anyway because you didn't have a 0 .05 ounce one dollar <laughs> blanket, right? Right. right. So uh, last thing, I have a uh, teachable C card in there. Just if there is a whole bunch of stuff going on and I need to jot some things down to remember it by. I, yeah. have, I have that in my marker. That's just good for passing notes. off care to the next level. Too, yeah, right? so if somebody else is going to hand off, you know, you put it around your casualty. Yeah. That's about it on, in my bid pouch. Um, like I said, I have more medical stuff just because, you know, we hate to say MedTC, but med, like, I love like, to say that. Yeah. It's <laughs> I love to say MedTC. Sue me. Yeah. It's cool. I, your mission depends on what you're doing. Like, so, like, I need it. Uh, same thing. I have extra gloves in there. 
Um, oh, I like that. Your gloves are in a bag. Oh, these? Mine so, are just like, bacteria, fill me up. Yeah, no, I'll just... Um, I just buy giant boxes of gloves from Harbor Freight because they're like three bucks, mm -hmm. and then sort them into smaller bags as I need them. Um, I do have some of the same cool little wrapped up, oh, like single single nice. use gloves. There's a SWAT T in there. Um, gloves. We don't have to like. So let's talk about this. Don't castrate me on this. I'm not using it as a tourniquet. Yeah. Um, so somebody is punching the air right now. Seeing right. This. Um, so SWAT stands for stretch wrap and tuck tourniquet. First of all, it doesn't function that well as a tourniquet, kind of like rats. Mm -mm. Rats tourniquet's a joke, no, right? No, elastic bands don't work well. Right, rubber bands right. are for rubber band things, right. right? Just like this is a big flat rubber band, but what is this good for? Holding pressure. Mm -hmm. So what would you typically use this for? I have that, I have extra draws. If I need another pressure dressing or something, yeah. it, it works great for and that. And look at the difference in packable size, yep. right? So this comes with a bunch of cool stuff, put two of these but there. you put two of these together and you've got the same thing, mm -hmm. not hemostatic. So put these two together, get the same thing and it, it packs a lot easier. Um, and in my opinion, it is a lot less uh, trouble to get used to using. This is a giant flat rubber band. Mm -hmm. You wrap it around things and it holds pressure. It sticks to itself. It's easy to tie in a knot. Nothing complicated. There's no plastic hooks or any of that crap. And then if you also have this kind of tape, once you wrap this around, dried it off, you tape it down, tape it down. with your pre-cut tape, frog tape or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I actually prefer this to a lot of pressure dressings just because it's easy to put on. But, yep. you know, anyway, you buy this and use it as a tourniquet, uh, you get duped. So Yeah, it's not, it's not a tourniquet. Please, if you're going to use actual tourniquets, make sure. Is there ever a situation that this would be a good tourniquet? I mean, if you've got nothing else, right? Nothing if, you, else. if you've got nothing else, the same, same as like people talk about belts and stuff like that. Like, if you've got nothing else, you can still maybe, try, right? Yeah, but I mean, improvised um, tourniquets have just—they've been shown to not work great. And people um, may have the question: Okay, you had this—you know, your your mall ninja eye fat. Mm -hmm. Why don't you have anything there for kids? So, could you use this for kids? It does. Talking about like one and a half, yeah, two yeah, years yeah. old. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I you mean, don't need much pressure to occlude a limb that's this big no, around. They, they're much more susceptible uh, right. to pressure. You can always like clamp that off if you need to and hold it. But if you need to free your hands up or something, correct. So it it'll could work, be it could be useful there. Like you said, you could right. just clamp their arm off. Um, I have clamped someone's brachial, an adult's brachial off, and had to hold, hold it for two oh, minutes until yeah, the got there. So, yeah, and it, it was exposed, so I could see like her humerus bone. But the idea is, you don't always have to. Nope. There's other ways to stop bleeding. It doesn't have to be like I can only use the Cat Seven tourniquet. Right. You know, but don't buy something gimmicky and use it because you thought it was cool and it was cheaper. Cat tourniquets cost twenty five bucks. Yep. And if it saves your life, was your life worth 25 bucks? Sure. I think so. But understanding how to use different things is good. So anyway, now that we've rabbit holed off on SWAT right. tees. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, it's. Let's talk about the next controversial <laughs> piece of kit. It's a, it's a good piece to talk about because like, as you said, with all of this stuff and anybody that's worked in EMS knows this, you have to be able to start MacGyvering and putting some stuff together. We can't carry an entire truck on us all the time. So yep. like, you need to be able to do what you need to do with what you have. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about our next piece of like controversial kit. I have needles. I have uh, decompression needles in there. And you're a paramedic, right? Uh, yeah. So, so, so talk about scope of practice, what that is. I'm a paramedic. Obviously, follow your state and local protocols. But I'm allowed to do this. I know why I would decompress somebody's chest, and I know when I would decompress somebody's chest. So if you have the training, you have the ability to do it if you have to. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's covered by a good Samaritan law or anything like that. You may be held liable for stabbing somebody in the chest, but I'd hear him. And the other side of that is, what did we say at the beginning of the video? This could be for you to use on somebody, mm -hmm. it could be for somebody to use on you. By having that resource on you, if your buddies or the people that are with you know how to use them and it's on you, right. they have that resource for you. So right. a lot of people get wrapped around the axle of, I'm never going to use that. Cool. What if it's needed on you and the guy who's there could have used it? And you didn't have it because you didn't understand the context, right? So I'm not saying carry them. I don't have them on my kit because I can't I don't have access to them unless he gives them to me. You know right. what I mean? So the uh, and for legal reasons, that's never happened. <laughs> I don't I don't have them. If somebody that's responding hopefully has them, you know. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea of an IFAC is I might use it on somebody else, but really is to be used on me. So it's not a bad thing to have. Yeah, I think that's like kind of really, sums it like, up. Yeah, re really sums it up. And the, I mean, the whole point of us like being in this is that we're at the point of injury, exactly. right? Where's EMS? EMS is at 7-Eleven, like stage, eating taquitos. Like, yep. they're, they're, they're gonna be a minute. So like, if, if, 
it's not like you're going to need it immediately, but if you need it, it's there. Yeah. Um, and the amount of times I've been the first responder rendering aid when I would have thought it would have been EMS is pretty right. high. And that's just understanding that their task is medical only, mm -hmm. not anything that has to do with defense. So cops end up there first, and you've got a kid bleeding out, been shot in the t chest twice. I'm not going to be like, wait for EMS, dog. I'm going to do what I can, yep. right? So there's times when you may need this stuff. And that's the whole point of our courses, right? That's, is that we, we teach first responders, mm -hmm. cops, civilians, what to do when they're at that point of injury. Yep. Like, because, it, because it will take a while for somebody else to get there. Yeah, the average EMS response time is seven or eight minutes, I think. Um, Nationally, nowadays, it's probably closer to, you know, 20 to 45, depending on where you live at. It's just, you know, system, system, systems yeah. are short. You bleed like, out in two to four minutes arterial, right. and you die from any of the tension stuff we talked about around 10. 10 minutes, yep. So, yeah, twice the length of all those things is about when EMS will get to you. Yep. If they're dealing with something like an active shooter, it could be hours. It could be a long time. Yeah, because I've, 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 I've staged for active scenarios for hours yep. because the scene's not safe, right? That's our that's our number one thing in EMS is like, scene secure, now we can go. Yeah, um, so as a cop, you have to be a multifaceted first responder to help right. people. And as an individual being your own first responder, mm -hmm. if we want to get really cheese ball, um, you need to have all those things. Because if you're in the mall for an hour and a half before EMS gets to you and you get shot in the arm, if you had a tourniquet, you get to live to tell the story and be on Fox News. Right. Um, you know, Fox and Friends, I survived. If you didn't have a tourniquet, then you died uh, yep. and you become a statistic, right? So uh, this is, we've, we've been joking, it's lighthearted, yeah, yeah. you know, but this is real shit. It's, this is the worst day of your life type of shit, right? Yeah, this is, this is literally emergency care, right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's all we're doing. Um, to, that's everything you have? Well, just, obviously, just to bring it back in real quick, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll finish up with a couple things. Um, the only other things in here are going to be more gauze to pack with, and so that like that's not the only thing. I do have a one more tourniquet, one more tourniquet soft tee on there as well. Yeah, um, and what's An the minimum? Right? Yeah, a real tourniquet, a real, tourniquet. A real one. Yeah. 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 Um, so, how many tourniquets do you think you should carry for this kind of work? This this kind of work? I mean, you've done it, right? I I would say in the military, I would have at least two on me, mm -hmm. that's what I was issued and told to carry in a, right. in a standard unit. You've got an right? SOP there, right? Right. Yeah, our SOP for the SWAT team was two. Yep. I carried four, mm -hmm. sometimes five. Um, think about it, you got four limbs, mm -hmm. as dumb as it might sound. What if you take frag or something like that uh, and you get hit with all four? I've watched a dude tell McCam footage of a, a Russian grenade going off in Afghanistan, right. and he gets hit in the thigh and the arm and has two arterials. Mm -hmm. So he immediately needed two tourniquets minimum. Tourniquets malfunction, you've got to double them up, blah, 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 blah. So having one tourniquet maybe not enough. I'm not telling you you got to wear four tourniquets to the mall, <laughs> but um, it's something to consider, yep. right? Because just having one of these and it, it, it doesn't work right, or you've nope. got more than one arterial wound, well, you're up shit creek without a paddle, right? Yep. So you need four. I keep, that, I keep that one. I normally have one on my belt as it is yes. as well, yeah. and, and a couple others around. Right. Um, it's, you know, it's a really good point. And I, just to kind of touch on that too, like you may not carry four to the mall, um, but also make sure that you have like the entire kit because what what our evidence is showing now, turn kits became huge for so long because like, it was yeah. coming from war, right? We have this 20 year GWAT that mm -hmm. like, we have all these limb injuries. And why do you think people are getting limb, like their limbs injured? Because so, all so of much? this was covered. Because all of this was covered. So in active threat, active, active shooter scenarios, we see way more head and chest injuries because they're not wearing any type yeah. of armor. So carrying a tourniquet's great, absolutely do it. Made sure that we have something to seal and pack with and stuff as well. Yeah, and just for me as a cop showing up to scenes, I've needed a chest seal more than I needed a tourniquet. Mm -hmm because people do get shot in the torso. Yep. Um, you know, bad guys only got to get lucky one or two times. Yeah, um, I've, I've used tourniquets more on like automobile crashes and stuff like yep. that uh, than I have on gunshots. Yeah, so you got to have a little bit of everything and understand where to put it and how to use it. The last thing I wanted to talk about is different ways of storing. We've been talking about what to put in an IFAC, mm -hmm. but obviously uh, size matters. So um, this is about the same size as your dangler, yep. roughly, okay? Um, you can see he carried a bunch of stuff in it. The Justa pouch uh, is pretty collapsible, but it's got some girth to it, right? Mm -hmm. It can expand and has three sections or chambers. Um, so you can hold a ton of stuff in that. Again, I'm not bringing that to the mall, um, but as far as what's on your kit and where you put it, uh, Faro Concepts has the one roll and pros and cons to that. I like it for extra stuff. 
So this is what I'll carry around my waist under my belt. You know, it would be sitting here on my back. And then they've got this one roll and pros and cons to it. What I like about it is that it allows me to carry things in a space that was previously unused. I didn't yeah. ever carry anything here, right. right? So it's not like it's taking up real estate that wasn't that, that was being used by something else. I'm not replacing anything with this. I'm only now adding more materials. Um, the problem is that it's, frankly, it's kind of small. Yep. Um, you can't, if you put a cat tourniquet in here, you reduce the capacity of what it holds by 50, 60%. Mm -hmm. So you need to have things that are a little more compressible. Um, to deploy it, you would just pull it out the sides, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I just wanna show you guys what I actually have in it. Um, it's basically like a, a burrito. You know, this is mm -hmm. like a, uh, what did we say yesterday? It's like a, it's like a, like a super felony from uh, Izzo's, right? <laughs> it's, um, you know, I, I gotta compare it to food, you know? Yeah, you have, um, you have a good grip on yeah, it. Yeah, well, I got, you know, yeah. uh, so <laughs> what you can keep in this thing is a decent bit um, so I've got again more chest seals yep. uh, naso pressure bandage more gauze more gauze more gloves mm. so if somebody went to this first they wouldn't find a tourniquet but I'm also going to have three other visible tourniquets on me for a total of four Where? So some people will say like, oh, I don't like this because you can't put a tourniquet in it. Yeah, but you should have way more than one tourniquet. Mm -hmm. So if you can't fit a tourniquet in here, why don't you fit all the other shit you need in here? Yep. So pros and cons, I'm not saying this is like the solution, but you can fit a lot in there. I do like this because it gives me like a little word space where I lay it out in front of me, everything, oh, yeah. everything's right there instead of like this, this right? I yeah. just yard that sale gets everything. like kicked and yeah. moved around, oh, yeah, rolling no, patient over. None of this know? is going back on the pouch when I have to do that and move, yep. right? This is like stuff's gonna get left behind. This, if nothing else, I can at least grab that whole thing. Yep. So there's pros and cons to it, like mm -hmm. I said. Um, like he just mentioned, it's at least everything's in one place. Um, but what we're really trying to tell you guys with this video is you need to have the stuff. How you have it on you, where you have it on you, how you have it arranged is going to be up to your personal preference. Your job or met TC, as you said, right? <laughs> right. What's your mission? If your mission is to go get tacos, um, you know, maybe throw that around the headrest or whatever else. But you need to have something. So if you don't have any of it, you're relying on EMS's response time, 10, 20 minutes, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and you are basically allowing your fate to be in the hands of other people that maybe don't care about you or don't know you. Uh, and I definitely care about me. I care about me. So I want to have my stuff, right? right? Um, any final thoughts or comments on it? No, man, that's about it. I think we've covered pretty much all of it. Um, if anything, the same. Just make sure you're carrying something. Yeah, you know? and, and get good training on how to use it. So we yep. offer that. Um, walk them through. Uh, just TACMED, TECC, and then talk about Care Under Fire, what's coming up. Okay, yeah. Um, so our TACMED is a modified stop to bleed. It's Tech Leo, basically. So it's tactical emergency casualty care for law enforcement. Um, it's a one-day course. It's eight hours. You're going to get about four hours of lecture and about four hours of skills lab and scenario. And why do we give them that lecture? Uh, we have to have the lecture because you get continuing education hours out of that course, right? So there's eight continuing education hours whether or post hours yep. uh, for that course, if that matters to you. Yeah, and it's, so it's certified it's, for law enforcement, yeah, right? Yeah, Through an AMT. Three years. Uh, three years cert. cert. So you get eight hours of post, but if you're not a cop, we don't care, no. right? Uh, come to the class and get the life-saving knowledge, get the little card that's like, I'm a provider. Right. Um, even if it doesn't matter for your job, you still need the knowledge, yep. right? So then the next level is TECC. Yep, we do a two-day uh, TECC class. It is pretty much that built onto. We will cover everything on the table plus some. Um, it, it, it does go into some advanced skills. It's built for paramedics. We offer it to everybody. Because uh, you will cover needle decompressions, you'll cover, we'll cover IVs, IOs, so intravenous administration of stuff and intraosseous in the bone yep. administration of, of medications. Um, and in that class, we do really, really harp on scope of practice, yes. state laws. We're doing it as a familiarization, not as like a, now you're certified to do this, right? Right. right. You've got to have your medical direction for that. Well, it's the same as if I would work with like an EMT or something, I want them to be familiar with the procedure and know how to do it. Right. That way, when I start doing it, like I, they know what's what I'm going to do next. Right. right. Um, exactly. Yeah. And, I'm trying or, to do this so quietly right now. <laughs> I'm like, go ahead, keep going, keep going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but we cover. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last level. And the last level. Care under fire. 
Silver, silver care under fire. I'm just gonna wait. We have uh, we have combined our CTB courses with some medical courses. Uh, it will be very little lecture. I mm -hmm. think we plan for like an hour, hour and a half of lecture, maybe. Just like, hey, here's how to put this yeah, stuff on. Here's this stuff. Here's how to use it. Let's do that. Right. Um, when the rest of it is just pretty much reps, right? Yep. Uh, reps, running scenarios. It's gonna be a lot of critical thinking aspect as far as which action you need to take and when. Um, so if there's still, still something going on, like. What, you're getting shot at. Yeah. <laughs> do we need to stop and do something right now? Probably not. Um, it's so it's, really it's a really making good me course. work that March algorithm mm -hmm. under fire, right? So like my buddy it goes down and I'm he's, we're still taking rounds from the direction he was being engaged from. It's probably more important to work that problem. Bullets could be good medicine sometimes, yep. right? Yep. And then all the adrenaline of that because it is a force on force class. Now in the middle of all that, you've got to actually work on this guy. There's fake blood going mm -hmm. on. You're using real equipment. We're going to provide training stuff. So the whole idea of it is. Well, one, there's going to be a prerequisite of CQB stuff, our courses. So you have to have come through our courses and understand the basics. And then you're going to be opposed for some force with entry and have to make medical, critical medical decisions. Right. Because is, uh, what do we always say in class, Jay? CQB safe? Nope. No. <laughs> Worst case scenario, right? Well, there's so, no consequences shows up. You've got to be prepared. Right. <laughs> so I don't, hopefully my mic didn't catch that. So we'll just blur that out. Beep. Uh, like Mike did to me on half of my jokes. Uh, we're going to do other videos on that. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about in detail. Um, so you hopefully have watched this whole video, put up with all our BS. Now we're about to film a video on March and a video on gunshot wounds. March assessment is the algorithm you're going to use in Care Under Fire. So watch that video to go into detail on how to actually use all this crap. Because mm -hmm. we've covered this, we've covered this, the Mall Ninja packs, the different types of kit, all the different accoutrement that goes in there and the minutia involved in all this land yap. So after all that, now you need to know how to actually use it. So watch those videos, come take a class, oriontraininggroup.com. It's open enrollment for American citizens. Appreciate you guys watching the video. Thanks. Like they're going to be shooting at us. We're going to have like, classes on this, this, and this. Stay tuned for future videos or sign up yeah, for classes. Right. Stuff so you can just cut it after the laughing, and then we'll be like, yeah, look, we're going to do, we're, we're do future videos on Karen and Fire, get into yeah. detail. As okay. long as we have your girlish laugh in there somewhere. <laughs> 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 not, not to, like, politically correct you, but uh -huh. trying to save you the YouTube comments, roll one. Roll one? What did I call it? One roll. One roll? Yeah. Okay. Fuck so we'll, we'll start in with that. Fuck them. <laughs> 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 what is it called? Roll one. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> this is called the the roll one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I said one roll. Is that what I said before? Like one piece, the anime? Mm -hmm. Don't watch anime. It's terrible. So this is the roll one. And I think forward observations helped make that. Yeah. So that's cool.